Hey everybody, Greg Dingrando here, back again with another episode of Explore Our Parks. This week we're taking a look at Fox Run Regional Park. That's on the northern part of the county, and this is another one of those great parks that has a variety of cool stuff. We've got a couple soccer fields, a gazebo, some ponds, a dog park. But one of the main things that really sticks out here at this park, some of the cool trees, what we call culturally modified trees, or CMTs. For that, we had to bring in our expert for this. This is former El Paso County Sheriff John Anderson. And John, you just really kind of became fascinated in these trees and you started researching. How did this all get started for you? Well, I've just found this a fascinating subject to study and more importantly, to get out in the field and locate these trees. I was always interested in uh, history in the American Southwest and that includes, of course, the Native American history and the idea that you could actually touch uh, and feel a living Native American artifact is really fascinating. So I've written a, a book on them and have really gotten uh, uh, into into finding the trees. So, so what is a CMT? What is a culturally modified tree? A culturally modified tree or CMT is a tree that's been modified by the indigenous people of a region for a particular um, reason. How do they go about even modifying these trees? Because some of them are very big. <laughs> They're huge. This one behind me is probably a couple hundred years old. So the modification Modification started when the tree was very young, very little, and pliable. The tree had to been pliable enough to have been bent. What they would do is they would tie a cordage or a leather strap around the tree and tie it down to a wooden stake in the ground, causing the tree to be bent over at that angle, knowing that the sun would write the growth pattern of the tree. So, this, so the tree is going to seek sunlight, and after a few years, that would be a permanent bend to the tree. Here in El Paso County, same in Douglas Jefferson, probably 95% of the trees that we found that were modified are ponderosa pines, like this large one behind me. So this took two opposing forces at the same time to create this. So that eliminates, in my mind, any natural you know, uh, snow load or wind blow. One of the fascinating things about this tree, it's been redirected again when it was very young, but if we look here, this is the primary trunk. So this tells you two important things. It tells you the diameter, the size of the tree when they modified it. So it's a little tree and it tells you the height because a tree grows from the top up. So this height is where they first did the bend, this modification when the tree was that big. This tree is a really special tree. It's a top 10. So at some point, they separated the trunk, meaning something's over there, and I think it's that other tree. And then they made this curve, and the only way I can think they did that is when the tree's growing and it's still pliable, and that was kind of like more the top of the tree, they hung a weight off of it to make that dramatic of a turn. Of course, the big question that I think a lot of people have is why, and it kind of maybe it depends on who you talk to, but what are some of the reasons that why some of these trees might be modified like this? Typically, it would be bent for wayfinding, for navigation as a trail marker, but it could be bent for a storytelling. Uh, we had a battle over here. It could be for spiritual purposes. We believe in some cases that it might be used for uh, identifying where people might be buried for a burial site or a spiritual site. What are some of the things that people need to look for? Because there are trees that they bend, but that might be from, say, snow, mm -hmm. but the CMTs are very specific. You have to eliminate things like a lightning strike or uh, disease like mistletoe or heavy snow load. There's a lot of natural causes that can deform a tree. If you start looking for the man-caused uh, characteristics, like is the tree even old enough? Is it over 100 years old? Is it starting to get some orange color like this one does? Does it have uh, the tie-down marks in many cases are still visible on the inside of the curve? And if you can get three or four of those um, in a row, it helps show, you know, there were different revisits and modification. Does it have a, a peel bark pattern that's indicative of uh, the bark extraction? So the more of the natural causes you can eliminate, the more confidence that you can have that it's a CMT. We have uh, some of these trees all over El Paso County, but we really have a lot here in Fox Run. About how many do you think we have here in Fox Run Regional Park? We think there's over a hundred. Uh, when I first started researching this about five years ago, we knew of about uh, three or four, and then we got to six, and then we got to eight and 10 and 12. 
Before long, we were up to a couple of dozen, and we realized that we were just in a small part of the park. Now we think there's probably over 100. And as far as we've been able to find so far, Fox Run is a fascinating classroom to study these CMTs because of the variety and the density. It really makes Fox Run stand out because of that. It really does. Out of all the parks in El Paso County, out of all the parks in Colorado, uh, Fox Run Regional Park here in El Paso County is really unique for the number and variety of CMTs. So come out and enjoy it. All right, thanks, John. Thanks so much for the Thank history you. lesson. These are just some fascinating trees. Again, we're at Fox Run Regional Park. This isn't the only place that we have these CMTs here in El Paso mm -hmm. County. But as John said, we have roughly 100 of these really, really cool trees that you can come and check out. So we encourage you to do it.